Yeah, I actually, uh, how I've done it is one thing, but I want to start off with an example of what I think is the single best right-brained idea in the single most dominant left-brained company in the world, which is the original Google search box. Okay. Imagine that little rectangle into which you could go in and type anything and the answer would pop up and that answer was based on deep science, huge amount of left brain technology, but they reduced it to that one little magical little box, right? And why I'm using that particular example is that now, of course, everybody talks about the user experience and the, and, 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 and the user interface as being very important, right? And I think more and more people are realizing that it is not about the technology that goes under the hood because that is, I won't say it's being taken for granted. And obviously there are cool technologies. The better you do it, uh, the more, um, you know, in, in the, the better your performance is the company, your product does well, and therefore your customers tend to use it more. But I think it's all about layering that user experience and saying, this is not about that complexity, but about making something very simple, right? And um, so to me, for me, uh, this whole thing about, in the early days of Crayon when I started, and I think certainly in my analytics firm, one of the things that we used to say is, how do you actually take all that science and kind of put a wrapper on it that makes it simple to understand in terms of visuals, in terms of um, you know words that people can take away and understand very, very easily instead of drowning them in the, in the, in the science of the product, right? And um, so I think there is no magic bullet to it to doing it. It's almost like you have to make a conscious choice that, listen, I don't want to say dump it down, but make it simple, make it simple. How can you tell that? Can you kind of distill out the essence of it? Uh, and I think great communicators have known this for me for a long time. I mean, you know, if you look back at it, it goes back to the idea of the pyramid principle that Barbara Minto talked about way back in the 60s, which is now the fundamentals of all consulting, right? Just tell me the simplest thing that you want to give me the conclusion and then give me all the rationale that supports it. Now we read Robert Cialdini, who has written probably the best book on influ on, on persuasion, which is called Influence. And he talks about the fact that every time when you want to do something, always give the conclusion and then explain the reasoning behind it. And the reasoning and the magic word that he uses is because, right? Say, I want you to do this, or I recommend you do this because that single insight is a right brain insight. Most people tend to lead the reasoning. They tend to say, oh, you know, I've done this thing. I've analyzed this. I've looked at a thousand things. I've done all of that stuff. And therefore, but most of the time, people don't want the therefore. They want that so what, the therefore up front. And for me, the single biggest thing that I think I contribute to this company, again, is I go back and tell me, people, what's that so what? Tell them that make the recommendation first and then support it with your reasoning. Um, okay. And there are many such examples of how you do it. But I think now this is becoming increasingly commonplace. I mean, I know we think India is a company of a country of technology people, but I see a lot of young people and I am very, very enthused by how well they communicate now in terms of this, what are that so what, and then explain the reason. It's not inbuilt. We are still used to the narrative style. I did X, I did Y, I did Z, and therefore I arrived at A. But um, I mean, if I had to give one tip to all your listeners, it would be like that. Set your conclusion, then give the reasoning. That's the simplest right brain philosophy that you can use.